I haven't slept in over two days because this video is the start of a project that I've wanted to do for the past 15 years. I've loved rockets as far back as I can remember, and of course, as a kid, I built model rockets, but that very quickly led to me wanting to strap rocket motors to everything. RC cars, toy planes, boats, squirrels. I'm just kidding about the squirrels. I never did catch one. And as an adult, I've put rockets on even more stuff in my videos, like a big cleaver, a tomahawk, a couple boomerangs, a spear, and a batarang that the hacksmith launched while he was still holding on to it. So naturally, I find the coolest weapons in video games to be the rocket launchers, of which the top of my list is the rocket launcher from Halo. Also known as the M19, the M41 SSR MAVAW, the jackhammer, but it's most commonly known as the spanker. That's spanker, not spunker. I'm not gonna be the first person to build the Spanker from Halo. A lot of people have built props of this thing. And if they did launch anything, it was just fireworks or remotely ignited rockets that were very unstable and found the ground very quickly after coming out of the tube. But since this is my favorite rocket launcher, I wanna do it justice, which means in order for me to make a real life version that's as good as it should be, I need to include these features. Mine's gonna have the clamshell that opens and closes and locks in place so that you can reload the launcher, which means the launch tube magazine needs to be light enough that I can reload it with one hand. And there will be a mechanism inside that allows the launch tube magazine to be able to spin to the next position to fire the second rocket and do the static animation from the game where the tubes index themselves. And in order for all of that to work exactly like it does in the game, there will have to be an electronic system inside the launcher that automates the whole system. And then I'll have to use a little bit of rocket science to make sure that the high powered rockets that mine fire actually fly straight and I want everything about the launcher to be accurately sized. And it should be easy to make this the right size because Halo PD has all the dimensions of the launcher listed. And when you look at the rocket launcher in Halo Infinite when it's being held, the dimensions for the length are accurate. But it looks weirdly small when you're holding it, and when you drop the rocket launcher, it grows by about a foot, which makes it a size that actually looks right. And this is where the dimensions break down. I need to take this rocket launcher and cross the bridge into reality with it, so I might have to take some liberties, especially because the bore diameter is way off. Halopedia has the rocket size listed as 102 millimeters, which means that's how big the inside of the tube has to be, which is almost exactly four inches. But the scale that it is in the game makes the inside of the tubes two inches, which would make the body of the rocket be about this size, which is way too small for an anti-vehicle projectile from a rocket launcher. So if I were to scale the entire launcher up to that four inch dimension that it's supposed to be, it would make the launcher about three meters or almost 10 feet long. And that looks like this which is crazy. But I don't wanna put big fat tubes on it without scaling everything else because that would just look goofy. So because these dimensions don't make any sense and contradict themselves, I can't use them. So what I need to do is scale everything to be a realistic size in real life because this isn't just gonna be a prop, this is gonna be a real working rocket launcher. First, the inside of the tubes need to be big enough to at least be close to accurate. But unlike the model in the game, the walls need to be very thin that way the tube itself looks accurate to the scale of the launcher. The launch tubes need to be rigid and have a nice smooth, even internal section so that the rocket can leave consistently. And they need to be light enough so that I can reload this thing one-handed, just like Master Chief does. PVC is the obvious choice for the launch tubes because it's inexpensive, but it's too heavy and the walls are too thick, which makes the tubes too fat. The best choice for strong, lightweight, thin-walled tubes is definitely carbon fiber, but Tubes that big would cost thousands of dollars, so that's out. Aluminum is another great option, and it costs far less than carbon fiber does, but it's still hundreds of dollars. And these tubes are not the only thing that I need to get to make this launcher a reality. And because I don't have unlimited funds, I need to find a financial and physical solution to this problem. And spoiler alert, I did. I looked up the process for how they actually make carbon fiber tubes. They start with an aluminum tube that they coat with release agent and then wrap it with carbon fiber. When they heat it up for the curing process, the aluminum expands and helps to compress the carbon fiber. When it's finished and it cools off, it contracts and you can pull the aluminum out from the inside of the carbon. If I have to get an aluminum pipe to do this, it makes it very expensive again. So I looked up the thermal expansion rate of PVC and it's two to four times that of aluminum, which means it should work. So I got a three inch PVC pipe, which has 
an outside diameter of three and a half inches, which is a perfect size for my scale. So I had my mandrel, but I needed a release agent. So I used some cellophane gift wrap that I had to wrap the PVC pipe before I did the composite. And it'd be great right now if I could use carbon fiber, but the amount that it would take to wrap these tubes would again make it very expensive. Luckily, I had a roll of high strength fiberglass that I got on clearance and it was big enough to be able to wrap both tubes. So with the help of a big table and no special tools, I did two wraps of fiberglass around the cellophane coated PVC and then put it into a foam box that I made with a hair dryer stuffed in one end to provide heat. And that made it cure fast and it helped the PVC to expand. After I took it out and it cooled off, the PVC fell out of the pipe, which was a huge win because I had no idea if this was gonna work. But the outside finish wasn't great, so then Bryce suited up with me to sand it nice and smooth before we put on the finished layer of fiberglass. I wanted the final layer to be this really awesome looking aluminized hexagonal weave fiberglass that I had, but I didn't have enough to coat all of both tubes, so I had to cut it in sections so that I could at least cover the parts that would be showing. This fancy fiberglass is not gonna make it look like it does in the game, but it will make it look really awesome and futuristic. And it was provided by one of my patrons. I've said it before, I'll say it again, my Patreon supporters are the ones that make this channel possible by supporting builds like this. And with all my other big projects, any digital files that I have from this one will be available to you guys on Patreon. These tubes are how you know this project is gonna be awesome because when you start with giant composite launch tubes made with exotic materials, there's nowhere to go but up from here or maybe down, but it's gonna go up. Now I need to put together all of these parts to have an assembled rocket magazine. A 3D model all of these parts in CAD to a realistic scale and they are as accurate as I can make them to the video game while still being functional. The print time on all these parts was well over a week. Luckily, my friend Dan offered to help me print out a bunch of the parts because I only have one printer, so it made it take far less time. So Dan, as a thank you, if you want to get a shot at this thing when it's all finished, I already got a rocket with your name on it. Well, I wanted to go big, and it's big. <laughs> it's also a very realistic size, and it's a little heavier than I thought it would be. One hand reload might be a little difficult for a normal human. This part turned out really awesome and it's going to get so much better because this doesn't have any of the finish work done yet and all the rest of the launcher needs made. I'm so excited. I can't wait to continue working on this. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time when I make the next part. <laughs> this is crazy because when you hold this, it looks just like first person in the game. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Yeah. <gasps>